Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is the fifth video on integration and we're going to be focusing on the trapezium rule. So this video is geared towards A-level maths but is applicable to most other maths modules. Alright, so you may remember from GCSE how to calculate the area of a trapezium. And that's simply found by adding the parallel sides, let's call them A and B. We multiply that answer by the height H and then we have our answer. So the area of a trapezium is found by half the sum of the parallel sides and then multiply that by the height. And we're going to use this idea, this concept, to help us work out areas or to approximate areas under curves. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a curve, we're going to split it into lots of little intervals which are trapezia in shape trapezium shaped and then we're going to calculate the areas of those and then add them together. So here's the basic idea. Suppose we have a function y equals f of x. Now normally if we want the area under the curve we can integrate y with respect to x and evaluate it between the bounds a and b. So suppose we were trying to integrate the function f of x dx which is the same as y and we want the area under, cur under the curve between a and b here we would integrate it. Now sometimes we're not able to integrate so what we can do is approximate. So let's approximate this by using some rectangles. So I could split this into a particular number of rectangles and work out the area of each rectangle and then add them together and that would give me a nice approximation for the area under the curve. But even better than using rectangles we can use trapezia. So if I was to now work out the area under the curve by adding up all the areas of each trapezium, that would give me a really, really close approximation. Now, first of all, we need to work out the height of each rectangle. So what would this distance be here? Well, suppose this was the x-ordinate, the first x-ordinate, let's call it x0. To calculate the height, how far up it is, it's simply going to be y0. So whatever x value I put in here, I'll put it into my function f of x and it will give me a y value. I could do the same here for x1 and that will give me a, uh, a y value, call it y1. I could do here x2 and that will give me a y value, y2 and so on and so forth until I get to the end which we'll call xn. Now, so I, I know the, uh, the length of each, rec of each trapezium, or these parallel sides. I know the length of each parallel side. I also need to know the height of this strip width. And that's what we call h. And h is found by doing b minus a over n. So remember, at the beginning, this was the value b. This was the value a. If I add those together and divide by the number of strips, or in this case, the number of trapeziums, um, we get a value h. So h is going to be the distance between each each one. And that's not very clear. Let's do it here. So this distance here, or the width of each strip, if you like, is the value h. So we add the, the last x-ordinate with the first x-ordinate, uh, sorry, uh, subtract them, b minus a over n, and then divide by uh, b minus a over n, and divide b minus a over n will give us the height h. Bit of a tongue twister there. So how does it work out? Well, let's see, the area of this trapezium here would be, um, would be y0, plus y1, so I'm going to add the parallel sides, I would multiply them by the height h, and then half my answer. And then the next one, I would add the parallel sides, which would be y1 and y2, y1 and y2, I'd multiply them by the height h, and then half my answer. The next one would be y2 plus y1 multiplied by the height and then half my answer and I will continue doing that until I get 
to this last rectangle here, or this last trapezium here, which would be y of uh, the second last strip, n minus 1, plus y of the last strip, y of n. We times that by the height, and then half our answer. So, and then what I would do is I would add up all these areas here, and that would give me the full area, uh, or a good approximate approximation for the area under the curve. So the area would be approximately all of this added together. Now, what is common to everything? Well, I can factor out half and h, because everything has that. Now, what does that leave me with? Well, I get y0, I'm going to have y1, and then I'm going to have another y1, because that appears twice here and here. I'm going to have another y2. Well, I'll actually have two of those. And I'll have two y3s. And so on and so forth. And I'm going to have two y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 1. And then finally, I'll have a uh, y of n. Now, if we inspect this a little bit more closely, we can see that the area will be approximately half the height. And we'll see that we have two of every term in between. So I have the, the first term, y0. I'm going to have two of everything else, so y1, y2, y3, all the way up as far as the second last one, y of n minus 1. And then we have that last y value. And this is the trapezium rule. So, here it is here. This is how it appears in the formula booklet. So, the area of uh, underneath a curve, y, can be approximated, approximately found by doing half the height times, if we add the first and last, and then we add to that double everything in between where h is found by b minus a over n. So that's a derivation of the formula. Let's have a look at an example to see how as well relatively straightforward it is to apply. So we've got um, we're asked to use the trapezium rule with eight strips. In other words, that's telling me n equals eight to estimate the area under under the curve with y equals the square root of two x plus three between the lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. So, the first thing we're going to calculate is h. h is going to equal uh, b minus a over n. Well, b is going to be 2, a is going to be 0, and n is 8. So that's going to give me a quarter. So each strip is going to be 1 quarter. So if we start at x0, we're going to do a table for this, so we're going to set out a table. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take, right, let's rewrite the table. We're going to take each value of x. We're going to put it into the function, work out the corresponding y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the trapezium rule. Trap rule. Okay. So the first value is going to be our x0, so the original ordinate. The x0 is going to be 0. That's where we're starting. x0 is a 0. So when I put 0 into this function here, I'm going to do the square root of 2 times 0 plus 3. So y0 is the square root of 3. When x is 0, the value of y is going to be the square root of 3. In fact, let's leave it as the square root of 3 for now. So y0 is the square root of 3. Then what we're going to do is work out x1. x1 is going to be 1 quarter. Because h is a quarter, I'm going to be 1 quarter up the x-axis. So let's write it as 0 0.25. So I'm going to do y0 equals 
I'd like to make myself a little bit more space. We don't need to be worried about running out of space here. And that's of course they stick together. So x0 is going to be 2 times 0 0.25 plus 3 and we need to take the square root of that. So we're putting the x value into the calculator like so. So we need the we need the square root of 2 times 0 0.25 plus 3. When we put that in, we get root 14 over 2. Root 14 over 2. Next thing we're going to do is do x2. Uh, x2 is going to be 0 0.5. In fact, let's write all the x, x's down. x3 will equal 0 0.75. Each time we're going up in a quarter. x4 will be not, not 0 point anything. It's going to be 1 going up in a quarter. x5 x5 will equal 1.25 x6 will equal 1.5 x7 will equal 1.75 and x8 will equal 2 and we're going to stop there because that was the value of b we're only going up as far as x equals 2 okay right so this is going to be that should be y1 not y0. Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6, Y7, and Y8. Okay, so we're going to put all of these in now. You might want to pause the video now, take your calculator out and put each one in. I'll do the last one here, y2. I'm just going to go back to my calculator, change the, the x, which was 0 0.25, change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we get an answer of 2. That will be 2. We'll do one more. Change that to 0 0.75, and we get 3 root 2 over 2. 3 root 2 over 2. So you might want to pause the video now. I'm going to fill out this table. Okay, back again. And now I've finished filling out the table. So let's return to the trapezium rule and see what it is that we should do. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to add up, add up all the bits in between. I want all the bits in between. I don't want the first and the last. I want to add up all those bits in between. And then I'm going to double my answer. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add up on the calculator this guy and this guy and this guy and adding all of these up. Let's make it a wee bit thicker there. Right. So we're adding all of these up. I'm going to do that on the calculator. And then I'm going to double my answer. Okay, so we're going to add up, add up all these, add and then double. Okay, again, I'm going to pause the video just to save a little bit of time while I add these up. Okay, and we're back again, and we've got 31.145. 31.145. And I hope you spotted my little mistake was here and I didn't include this when I was doing it but we don't want that root 7 to be added in as well it's not part of it we only want the bits in between 31.145 uh, so we've got that bit let's scroll up we've got this part of the trapezium rule sorted I've also got I've also got the first and last term so we've got we've got the first we've got the last Let's add them on to what we have. So I've got the first term, which is root 3. 
we're going to do the area will equal root 3 plus 31.145 that's what we're going to add together and um, the first and the last which is root 7 so plus root 7 so that's the first and the last adding everything in between that was doubled 31.145 what I'm going to do then is times that by the height, the height h, and half my answer. So half of, and what is the height h? h is a quarter. A half times a quarter times all of that. That's a half times a quarter times all of that. Let's get the calculator out. Um, see how the calculator copes with this so we've got one over two times a quarter which is one over four over four and we need to times that by square root of three plus square root of seven plus the bit in between thirty one point one four five Close those brackets. We get an answer of 4.44 equals 4.44. And that is a good approximation for the area under the curve. Just before we finish up, I'm going to see if the calculator can actually work out the exact integral. I'm not sure whether it will be able to do it, but we'll give it a go. Uh, the square root of, sorry, the integral of 2x plus 3. And we want to evaluate that. We can never get, there we go. Between 2 and 0. See if the calculator can manage that. Lo and behold, if I integrate it, we get 4.44, and our approximation, 4.44, was as good as it's going to get. Okay, hopefully you found that video useful. We're just going to do one example. I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, all the best, and take it easy.